Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what's new in the Camera Raw update which just dropped and I believe the official number is version 13.2 but that doesn't matter. You're on Creative Cloud, you're always getting the latest version and of course Camera Raw works in both Photoshop and Bridge. So whether you're a Bridge user or a Photoshop user you can uh, open up your images in Camera Raw. So, uh, and of course my Lightroom users, I'll give you an update um, when that update, if and when an update comes out, I'll give you that update for that as well. But let's stick to Camera Raw today, since that's what we have today. So what I'm going to do is I'm in Photoshop right now. I'm just going to go up to my file menu and come down and choose open. And I've got a folder here of just various raw, well, actually various images. I've got some raw files, I've got JPEG and uh, different cameras, so forth and so on. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of these um, ones that I shot uh, when I did our model shoot. And let's go ahead and just open those up. And as normal, they open up in the film strip. And of course, Camera Raw has come a long way. Uh, if you think about it, it, it looks more and more like Lightroom these days. And after today, you're going to think more and more about Lightroom. So first and foremost, we've got the film strip on the bottom now, which that's not new in this update. Uh, but you can put it on the side like it used to be or down at the bottom. But what is new in this update is a couple new icons underneath the film strip. So you'll notice underneath the film strip, there is a couple new icons here on the end. This first one is sort. So I have a couple of images here that I have gone ahead and rated five stars. That one's a five star image. That one's not. That one's not. That one is. So let's say I wanted to see my five star images up front. Maybe I had a hundred images in the film strip. So I could just say uh, sort by star rating and now my star rating or my starred images go up front in the ranking of the stars. So five stars would be first, four stars after that, so forth and so on, down to no rating, uh, which would be the ones on the end. And of course you can sort by capture date, which is what we default to, file name, star rating, color label, and you can reverse the order so it just, they will put them on the end of the film strip instead of the beginning. So that's great. I'll put them back to capture date for now. Now the next update here is the ability to filter. This is also looks just like Lightroom. So instead of me seeing a hundred different raw images in my film strip, I can say just show me the ones that are five stars. Boom. It hides all the rest until I'm ready to see them again. And now I can concentrate just on these two. So that's another great addition, uh, especially for those that work with a bunch of different raw files at the same time. Uh, and of course, we can clear the filters and then that brings them right back. All right, next up, we're going to go into um, kind of a, a, a hidden thing, and that's in the panels themselves. You wouldn't know this is here unless you right click, like I'm on the edit panel, and I right click right next to the name of it. And you notice there's a new option that says edit panels to show. So when I choose that option, as the name implies, I can now uncheck panels that I never use. Now I use them all, I can't imagine living without one of these, but if I had to give up one, eh, I guess it would be the color um, black and white mixer. And again, you don't have to give up any, but it's just for those people that say, hey, I only do profile, basic, and detail, I can just do those. Uh, so you can uncheck all the ones you're not using. But what I like better, not so much unchecking, but you notice there's a button that says default order, which means I now have the ability to do a custom order. So for example, I like profile basic, but um, I would like detail to be next. So now I can select detail, hit my up arrow on my keyboard, and that puts detail as my next thing. I also like optics, so I can move that up. And I also prefer uh, effects actually. Let's move effects way up. I like effects actually to be right under basic. And then geometry, I'm gonna move that up underneath optics. And now it's in the order I want. Maybe I'd want color grading after that. And now it's in the order I want. And I could always go back to the default order. And of course, I can turn this panel on or off as needed. So when I click OK, now my panels are in the order I just specified. So effects is next. Detail is after that. Optics is after that. Geometry is after that. The color and black and white panel is gone. And of course, I can always bring it back if I choose to. Uh, just by turning it on. And of course, you can click back on the default order to get right back to the way uh, Photoshop and Camera Raw, or Camera Raw, I should say, defaults them. So again, this is another borrowed thing from Lightroom Classic, the ability to turn off panels you don't use and to reorder them in the order you want. 
All right, so uh, now let's move on to the next thing. I'm going to cancel out of these. I'm going to choose open and open up a different set of raw files one more time. Let's open up these two. Now these two are different. These, uh, the first ones we saw were shot with my DSLR. So those were shot with like a, a Nikon D850. These were actually shot with my iPhone. These were shot with my new iPhone 12 Pro Max. And the beauty of the 12 Pro Max is that it can shoot in Apple Pro Raw. The downside to that, from what we heard loud and clear from our users, is that, hey, when I shoot in Pro Raw, and I bring those images into Lightroom or Camera Raw, they don't look as good as they did when I shot them in my, you know, like, they don't look as good as in the Photos app or as uh, in the Camera app on my phone. And you're absolutely right, because we always defaulted raw files to Adobe Color. In other words, flat. Just, like, take all the juice out of it, you'll put the juice back in. And we know users don't necessarily like that, especially if they're shooting with their phone. They kind of want it to look good right off the bat. So we created a brand new profile called Apple Pro Raw. And luckily, um, you won't really have to bother with this. It should default to it when it sees an Apple Pro Raw image. But look at the difference. This was Adobe Color. Flat, you do all the work. This is Apple Pro Raw. This is like what you probably saw on the back of your camera or your phone or what you see currently in the Photos app. So we put the juice back in. Still, we didn't change any sliders. You can still go adjust it to your heart's content, but it puts that back in. Now, again, I changed it to uh, Adobe Color just to show the example. I changed this one to Adobe Color, but it defaulted to when I opened it up first the first time to Apple Pro Raw, just a big difference. Now, we can go ahead and kind of finish this one. Let's make an auto tone there. And let's just go ahead and add a little dehaze to this image and maybe bring the um, bring the exposure back up just a little bit. There we go. So I can get much better images from my raw images off my iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max with the new Apple Pro Raw, um, the Apple, new Apple Pro Raw profile. And uh, again, it's great to have that addition. All right, I'm gonna cancel out of those two. Yep, yep, I'm gonna cancel, uh, including, yes, cancel, cancel. All right, one last thing, and this is a big one. i choose open one more time. And this time I'm gonna point to a JPEG. Now, if I just open it, it's just gonna open it up in Photoshop like it always does. But I'm gonna switch it, this is the way we get JPEGs in the camera raw. I'm gonna switch it from the format being JPEG to Camera Raw. That just tells it to open up the JPEG in Camera Raw. That's the way it's always been. Now when I do that, it opens up the JPEG in Camera Raw. Not a, not a raw file. It's a JPEG. It says it right at the top. And this is one I took years ago when I only had a 2 megapixel camera. So this is 1.8 megapixels, 1152 by 1536. And again, it, it was a, I think it was a, a, a Nikon um, like point and shoot or it was a Nikon like early DSLR, but it, it looks okay. And quality's good, it, it looks good. But what if I want it to have more resolution for print? Like I just want this to be a bigger file. I don't wanna, and of course I can take it into Photoshop and I can res it up and it will try and do a good job maintaining the quality, but we've made a breakthrough that you can now do this in Camera Raw. And it can double the resolution and make it look exactly the same as it did at the smaller resolution. So how do we get to that? Well, you open up the, this is why we had to open up in Camera Raw, because you need it on the film strip, because you right click on the thumbnail. When you right click on the thumbnail, there's Enhance, that was there before, but now there is Enhance Super Resolution. Now I'm working on a beta, you'll normally see a preview and you can even move the preview around. Uh, you can move it around and like I said, you would normally see that and so you can see the uh, resolution and see what it's doing. But I'm just going to go ahead and say, yes, super resolution is enabled. Go ahead and enhance this and do it. Now what this will do is it will build a new file. It will make a new DNG, a new raw, even though it's not technically a raw file, it will make it into the DNG format. So now I have... Um, the original, which again is the 1152 by 1536, 1 1.8 megapixel. And if you double it, it's really not twice the numbers, it's four times the numbers. And if we look at this one now, it's 7.1 megapixels. So we just really doubled the resolution of that image. And again, we kept the quality the same. And that's the beauty of it. Now, where does it put the new DNG? It puts it in the same exact folder 
as the original file. So the original file's there. This is right next to it with the word enhanced in the file name. So you'll know which one's which. And of course, from here, you can go in and do whatever you would normally do. So I can hit auto. I can uh, run a little dehaze on that and I can get this image and I can open it up in Photoshop and then print it or export it out with the new larger resolution maintaining the same quality that I had. So those are the new updates in Camera Raw 13.2. I hope that you enjoy them. Look forward for more. I uh, know what my Lightroom users are thinking. Stay tuned. But look forward to more. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.